This tutorial will look at the active and passive pressures that occur when we have a sheet pile supporting an excavation which is embedded in the ground. There are two main methods in which we can use to determine the susceptibility in such a case. One is known as the Rankin method, the other is known as the Coulomb method. This video will look at the Rankin method and in due course we will look at the Coulomb method. So before we start delving into equations and formulas, let's go through the key assumptions which the Rankin theory is based upon. First one, the retaining wall is vertical. Second, the interface between the wall and the soil is frictionless. The soil surface is horizontal and no shear stresses act on the horizontal and vertical boundaries. The wall is rigid and extends to an infinite depth in a dry, homogeneous isotropic mass. And lastly, the soil is loose and initially in an at-rest state. It is important to take the time to understand and remember these assumptions because in due course we'll be looking at the differences between the Coulomb and Rankin assumptions. But for now, um, I want to show you the way in which I remember these assumptions for the Rankin theory. Um, I just start off by drawing a simple isometric drawing of a sheet pile supporting an excavation, and then I just say what I see. This helps jog my memory, and hopefully, it can do the same for you. So, I've drawn my diagram when this question comes up in the exam. Now I just say what I see. The retaining wall is vertical. First one, bingo. Now, the interface between the soil and wall is frictionless. How do I get this? Well, I've drawn the F here next to the retaining wall, and it's prompting me that I'm talking about friction and the interface between the soil and wall. That's how I get this from this diagram. Then, say what I see. The soil surface is horizontal. I can see that from my diagram that I've drawn, and then I just that helps me go on to say, and no shear stresses act on the horizontal and vertical boundaries. Then this arrow down here at the bottom of the diagram is prompting me that the wall is extending to an infinite depth, and then that helps me go on to say the wall is rigid and in a homogeneous isotropic mass. Then these little uh, particles over here spaced out, just again prompting me to say the soil is loose and going on to say at uh, an initially at rest state. Okay, so I've shown you the diagram that I use to help prompt me for the key assumptions on which the ranking theory is based upon. I've included it because it helps me, hopefully it'll help you. Um, but now let's let's go on to the active and passive pressures and begin to look at the formulas. Here we have an excavation with an embedded sheet pile retaining the soil behind it. We have two sets of pressures acting on the wall. The reason we have pressures acting on the wall is because of the soil it is retaining on the right hand side and the soil that is supporting the pile on the left hand side. As we said in the previous video, active pressure exists on the right hand side pushing to the left. As the pile is embedded, we have a pressure pushing against the pile towards the right. This is known as the passive pressure. Fairly straightforward, right? Well, the complication in analysing the pressure comes from the point of rotation. Let's say that the point of rotation happens at this location, a few metres below the excavation, say. Active pressure, we know, tries to undermine our pile and so pushes it anti-clockwise. Passive pressure attempts to stabilise our pile, pushing it clockwise. So we have active here on the right hand side and passive on the left here. Now we've got a point of rotation here so what happens below this point of rotation? Well going back to our anti-clockwise and clockwise rotation active pushes anti-clockwise so by rights our active is over here on the left and our passive is on the right 
at the bottom here. So you can see from our pressure diagram of this pile that we have active and passive on both sides due to the point of rotation. Now looking at this we have two unknowns. We have the depth of embedment D and the depth of the point of rotation. As a result we would be left with a quadratic equation too lengthy to solve. So to simplify the point of rotation is assumed to be at the foot of the pile here. This leaves us with only one set of active and passive pressures acting on the pile like so. Makes it far simpler. So let's go on now and try and work out some formulas purely by looking at this pressure diagram. Let's start off by looking at the active case. I want to know the force due to the active pressure. Well, we know that force is equal to pressure times the area. The area being the area of the active pressure diagram. So, it's this little triangle here. We know the area of a triangle is a half times the base times the height. The height, we can see, is h plus x. So we've got that down. Now the base. Well, we've got to remember this is a pressure diagram. So if we were to calculate the pressure at this point, it would be Ka times sigma v. Ka being the coefficient of active pressure and sigma v being the vertical stress. So we've got our base and we've got our height. Now we just need to halve it. So the active force. Uh, which we're going to donate here as PA is equal to a half times KA times sigma V times in brackets H plus X. Now say for the active case I wanted to work out the moment. Now the moment is obviously going to be um, we're going to be looking at the point of rotation and we said um, when we simplified it that our point of rotation comes uh, is now known to be at the foot of the pile. So we know that our active force um, acts one third from the point of rotation here. So to work out our moment due to the active case it would be simply our PA, our active force that we calculated earlier, times by x plus h divided by 3. So that's the active case sorted and um, I'm not going to go through it but hopefully you can see the same um, if you tried to work out the formulas due to the passive force and the formula for the passive moments so here they are PP equals a half KP times Sigma V times X and then our passive moment is equal to PP times our X divided by 3 Now to calculate our Ka and Kp in the previous tutorial we said that Ka is simply calculated by 1 minus sine times the internal friction angle divided by 1 plus sine the internal friction angle. Now Ka is the inverse of Kp so we know that Ka is equal to 1 over Kp and therefore Kp is equal to 1 plus sine the internal friction angle divided by 1 minus sine the internal friction angle. So there we have it that's the basics of the ranking theory looking at the active and passive pressures. Now um, I will be doing videos in due course um, which will show how we can calculate the depth of penetration required for a PAL and to know whether um, the PAL is stable or not and that will be using the ranking theory so I'll catch you in those ones.